Hi, welcome to the module 18, uh, ready to go on here for uh, math 7. Or actually, math 8, I guess, math 7 accelerated. Anyway, let's get started with the first question, and it is uh, solving this equation here, for which I am going to copy it, and I'll bring it over to the side, giving myself some room here. And so what you got to do is you need to... Uh, isolate A. The first thing I would do is I would recognize that I have two sides of the equal sign, left side and right side. And my plan is I'm going to get A is equal to something. <clears throat> now to do so, I'm going to push this uh, A over to the left hand side. And to push it to the left hand side, I'm going to use inverse operations. So the opposite of plus A is minus A. And remember that that counts as one a okay and uh, if you do that then these cancel each other out and that's the whole idea but what you do to one side of the equal sign you have to do to the other side so you subtract 1a here 4a minus 1a is 3a 3a minus 4 is equal to 8 and then now the plan is to move my constants to the right hand side using those inverse operations again uh, so that would be adding 4 there. These cancel. It's the whole idea. And you get 3a is equal to 12. Looks like I'm going to have to move this a down a little. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, I'll have to move this down a little bit. So um, <clears throat> now this is 3 times a. And the inverse, uh, inverse operations, again, the inverse of multiplication is division. So you divide by 3. They cancel, but you got to do it to both sides of the equal sign. So you divide this by 3. And here we go. Here's A, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so the answer is 4. That's the solution. And let's go um, A is equal to 4. Okay, <clears throat> next. We got this other one, number 2. Oops. And for this problem, we will uh, once again say that we got two different sides here. Our plan is to have x is equal to something. And we're going to push the x's to the left hand side. So I was using inverse operations. And those would cancel each other out. And I have to subtract x here. 4x minus counts as 1x is 3x. I'm going to write down the rest here equals 8. And I'm going to push the constants to the left-hand side using the inverse operations. So that means I have to subtract 5. Better do it to both sides of the equal sign, because what you do to one side, you have to do the other side. So 3x, these cancel, equals 8 minus 5 is 3. All right, the inverse of multiplication is division, so I have to divide by 3. That gets these to cancel. Perfect but you better divide by 3 here too. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. And so x is equal to 1. <clears throat> All right, that's what we got. And we have this other one here where number 3, Hugh is arranging chairs. Oh, yeah, she can form six rows of a given length with three chairs left over or eight rows of the same length if she gets 11 more uh, chairs. Write and solve the equation to find how many chairs are in the that row length. So when we have uh, six rows, there's six rows of these chairs, and we have three more left over beyond those rows. Or she can have uh, eight rows of that same length, but she gets 11 more chairs. So I, I would have to have 11 more chairs here. Or I could represent it as minus 11 on this side, but I don't think it makes as much sense to do that. So anyway, we have uh, this right here is uh, 14. So 6C plus 14 is equal to 8C. Let me do that over here uh, with some room here. 6C plus 14 equals 8C. 
6c plus 14 equals 8c. I would have to, with two sides of the equal sign, I'd have to subtract 6c because I want the c's to be on one side. So <clears throat> I would subtract 6c on both sides. These cancel. That's the idea. 14 is equal to 2c. Now the inverse of multiplication is division. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and we have 7 is equal to C, so it is 7 chairs in each row. So I would go um, uh, 7 chairs in each row. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this one. I will copy this, bring it over. Um, right here. Now, the whole idea is to uh, get rid of the fractions. So, I will multiply everything by the least common denominator. I got 3, 3, 6, 3. The common denominator is 6 because 6 will multiply to 6 and so will 3 will multiply to 6. That's how I chose 6. Now, I'm going to multiply 6 by each item here 3 goes into 6 2 times and 2 times 2 is 4 so that would be 4n now uh, right here again uh, 3 goes into 6 2 times and 2 times 2 is 4 so we got the minus right there that minus right there and then 4 again and then I have to write down equals because that's right there and then I'm going to say, well, 6 goes into 6. As I as I distribute the 6 to this one here, then I have 6 goes into 6 one time, and 1 times n is 1n, I guess. And then I have 3 goes, as I multiply 6 times this last item, I have 3 goes into 6 2 times, and 2 times 4 is 8. Maybe plus 8, right? Because it's we have... Um, I mean, it's positive six, positive six times positive four thirds is positive that, positive eight. Anyway, now that we've gotten rid of the fractions, we can solve it like uh, we normally would. Two sides of the equal sign. I would subtract one n to push the variable terms to the left hand side. Four n minus one n is three n, and then I'll copy down the minus four and I'll copy down the eight. Now I'm going to force the constants to the right hand side using the inverse of minus negative 4 or minus 4 however you want to think of it I would add 4 I got 3n is equal to 12 and finally the inverse of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3 so I would divide by 3 these would cancel 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4 and that is our final answer. N is equal to 4. So I'll write uh, N is equal to 4. All right. We got this, uh, this other one here, number 5. I'll copy it and put it down here so I got more room. And what I would do, sometimes they say multiply by 100 or something. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to solve it like I normally would. I'll just recognize that there's two sides of the equal sign. Um, and you know what? I'm going to pick minus 1.5d. I'm going to do this. They need to be opposites of each other. That's why it's negative 1.5. Because 1.5 minus 1.5 is 0. I'm trying to cancel them out. And what you do to one side, I'll do to the other side. Minus 1.5 times d. And I chose... I mean... You could have chosen to subtract 2.25d from both sides. That's fine. But over here, I would have had a negative number when I subtracted, and I didn't feel like having that. I wanted to have a positive number. So, eh, you know, everybody has their own way. So I have 3.25 is equal to 1 plus. Now I have to subtract these. This is 5, 12 minus 5, 7.75d. Okay, now that I have the variables on the right-hand side, that means the constants need to be on the left-hand side. So I would subtract 1. Remember, 1, the decimal on 1 is right there. Lining up your decimals 
you have a 2.25 is equal to 0.75, oops, 0.75 times D. I have to divide by 0.75 using those inverse operations. How many times will 0.75 go into 225? One, two, three, I think it's three times. Let's see, yeah, it's three. And do I need a negative somewhere? Nope, don't need a negative. Uh, 0.75 goes into 225 three times, and that is equal to D. That's our answer. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, oh so D, D, oops, uh, D is equal to three. Okay, we have uh, Happy Paws charges $19 plus $1.50 to keep a dog during the day. Uh, $1.50 per hour to keep the dog during the day. Wolf Watchers charges $15 plus $2.75 per hour. Write and solve an equation to find out how many hours the total cost of these services is equal. Okay, so we have, um, we have um, Happy Paws and Wolf Watchers. Wolf Watchers. So we want to know when they're equal. And for Happy Paws, it's $19 plus $1.50 50 per hour and we're trying to find how many hours so I put a variable next to that 1.5 and then for wolf watchers it's $15 plus 275 an hour so it's $15 plus $2.75 per hour so there you go we got to solve this equation and I will let's see can I move this nope can't so I just got to copy it And that was a terrible copy, but it'll work. And I'll bring it over here. So we have, um, I would say, let's see. I will see that there's two sides of the equal sign. I'm going to subtract 1.5x simply because 1.5 is smaller than 2.75. And when I subtract them, I'll end up with a positive number. You don't have to do it that way, but... I figured I would. So, whoops, it got off on me there. 1.5 x, and you get 19. These cancel is equal to 15 plus. I got to subtract these. It's going to be an x very uh, x term. So it's going to be 5 to 1.25. Then I have to bring the variable terms to the left. Uh, um, variable terms, the, the constants to the left. And so that means I have to subtract 15. 19 minus 15 is 4. And that's equal to 1.25 times the number of hours. you got to divide by 1.25 because it's being multiplied by the number of hours. And these cancel, which is great. And divide this by 1.25. And that's going to be something weird. It's going to be, I think it's 3.2. It should be 3.2. Let's see. Um, if I take, so really it's 4 divided by 1.25. So that means 1.25 going into 4.00. Uh, if I bring these over here, 1, 2, then uh, this will not. It's going to be the decimal is going to be there. Might need this. So 125 doesn't go into four. It doesn't go into 40. But 125 will go into 400 three times. Three times 125 is 375, and that is 25 to 50. And here's the decimal point right there, because it goes straight up there. And then uh, I think that's 250. So two times. Oops, two times. And because 2 times 125 is 250, you could do it in a calculator much faster than I just did. But that means that x is equal to 3.2, 3, 3.2 hours. That is our answer. Right there. Uh, 3.2 hours. Which, uh, that, that's how many hours you would have to wait for the, toss, the cost to be the same for both companies. Okay, let's go to the next one, number seven. 
I'm just going to do that part right there. And let's bring it over here. Oopsie. We'll bring it right here. And I will solve this one. Um, I'm going to distribute the 1 fourth. So 1 fourth times x is 1 fourth x uh, minus 1 fourth times 7 is going to be 7 fourths. And really what I do is I just, when I'm multiplying this, I'm thinking 1 times 7 is 7 over 4. And then I have equals 1 plus 3x. Hmm. Since 1 fourth is smaller, I'm going to subtract 1 fourth. It's going to be interesting. I subtract 1 fourth x minus 1 fourth x. So these cancel. I get negative 7 fourths. I know that it was minus right there, but minus and negative, they count as the same thing. And uh, equals 3 minus a fourth. Now I'm thinking, but 3 minus a fourth, that's like $3 minus a quarter is $2.75. Or $2.70. Um, you know what? I won't go into that. Um, 2 and three-fourths, right? You want to see that? For those of you that want to see exactly, uh, three, because really what I'm doing is I'm doing three minus one-fourth. Three is the same thing as three over one, so I need a common denominator. Uh, the common denominator between the two is going to be four. One goes into four and so does four go into four. So four uh, 4, 4 goes into 4 one time. This fraction remains unchanged, right? Same denominator. It's going to be the same numerator. But um, 1 times 4 is 4, so I get multiply 3 times 4, and that's uh, 12. So now I have um, 12 minus 1, which is 11. Oh, you know what? 11 fourths looks easier than 2 and 3 fourths, so maybe I'll just keep 11 fourths. Even though 2 and 3 fourths is the same thing as 11 and fourths. But, um, yeah, I think, I'll, uh, I think I'll use that. So that would be 11, whoops, 11 fourths x. Now, what I need to do is I also need to recognize that that 1 needs to be written down here. Can't forget that 1. So... Let, we, we now need to bring that 1 to the other side by subtracting 1. So if I subtract 1, oh boy, what do we got here? Negative 7 fourths minus 1. Well, isn't 1 the same thing as 4 fourths? And the reason why I chose 4 fourths is because I'm looking at this denominator of 4. And when you subtract fractions, you need the same denominator. So instead of one right here, and instead of minus one, I'm gonna use this four fourths right here. I'm gonna squeeze it in right here. So right here, I'm gonna say minus four fourths. And so what that means is we have negative seven minus four, negative seven minus four is uh, negative 11. And then you always keep the same denominator when you're subtracting fractions. So, is equal to 11 force x. Let's bring this up a little bit. And, uh, well, I'm thinking about, how about this? Uh, I'm, I see that the answer is negative 1, right? Because this times something equals the opposite of it. Look, 11 force times something is equal to negative 11 force. That has to be negative 1, because this times negative 1 would be negative 11 fourths. How else could I show that? Maybe I could do this. I can multiply by 4 over 11. That gets these to all cancel. But you have to do the same thing on the other side. And these cancel. And these kind of cancel. Now yeah, you know what? Forget it. You would have negative 11 over 11, and negative 11 divided by 11 is negative 1, which is equal to x. So there you go. Now I just showed you that it's equal to negative 1. Okay. Then uh, where is it? So uh, the next one is number 8. So this was uh, x. x is equal to negative 1. And then we have number 8. So number eight, I will copy. 
So uh, here, bringing it over, we get a lot of stuff here. Okay, there we go. Get everything else out of the way. So we're going to solve number eight, and that means we have three times. I have to distribute the three. So three times x is three x. Three times five is fifteen. That's plus fifteen because that was a positive. And then equals two times three x is six x plus because because you know positive times positive is positive. And uh, 2 times 12 is 24. Then we got two sides. I'm going to pick this. I, I have 6x and 3x. I'm going to pick the smaller one here. And I'm going to subtract 3x. And so these cancel. You get 15 is equal to 6x minus 3x, which is 3x plus 24. I need this to go over here, but I need the inverse operation, so I have to subtract 24. That gets used to cancel, and I subtract 24 here, too. Uh, this is going to be negative. You have to subtract them. There's more negatives than positives, so it's negative. And then for now, I'm just going to think 24 minus 15 is, uh, I think that's 9. Yeah, so 9. So it's negative 9 equals 3x. And you have to divide by 3 because that's the inverse of multiplying by 3. Cancel. Do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. And x is equal to negative 9 divided by 3, which is negative 3. There you go, negative 3. Okay. Now we have, ooh, number 9. So we have to find out how many solutions there are. So, oops, why did I do that? So we have, oh, I have it right here. I didn't notice. So how many solutions? Well, it, okay. Uh, well, let me just solve it and then I'll tell you how to, you can tell. It, it, maybe I'll just say, if you have x is equal to something like five, then that's one solution. If you have x equals x, that's infinitely many solutions, okay? And if you have um, like 6 equals 7, that's no solution, okay? So let's try to solve this now. We have, we distribute the 5 to both of these. You get 5x minus 15. I'll add 6. I'm just writing down the rest of this. Um, I could put these together. Negative 15 plus 6, that's negative 9, I think. 5x minus 9 is equal to 5x minus 9. I already know it's infinitely many solutions because I can see that this side is the same as this side. But I'll just keep on going. I should get something like x equals x when I'm done. Uh, so how about I add 9? And that means I get 5x is equal to 5x divide by 5 and these would all cancel and x equals x so that's infinitely many solutions and what's going on with infinitely many solutions well that means that you can put anything you want in for x and it's going to be the same like I could put x for 2, and I could put 5 in for x, negative 8 for x, or whatever, and both sides will be the same every time. And we have uh, number 10. I will copy number 10. Bring it over here. And let's see. I can distribute. 5 times x is 5x, minus 5 times 3 is 15, plus 6 equals 5x minus 10. Uh, I will put those together, and that's negative 9. 5x minus 9 equals 5x minus 10. Uh, I will, uh, I'll decide to subtract 5x. And that would be, that these would cancel, and you get negative 9 is equal to negative 10. Oops, negative 10 which is untrue. 
Negative 9 is not equal to negative 10. That's, that's when you have no solution. Something ridiculous like that. That's not going to work. Now, you might be wondering, um, maybe maybe you didn't. Maybe you maybe you thought about this. Maybe you, you're at 5x minus 9 equals 5x minus 10, and you decide to subtract. No, I'm sorry. You decided to, I don't know, add 9. What if you decide to do that? You'd have 5x is equal to 5x uh, minus 1, right? Because negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Then you would subtract 5x, and you get 0, right? is equal to negative 1, which still is just like this case right here, which is untrue. 0 is not equal to negative 1, so still you would get no solution in that case. Okay, now number 11. How can you use equations on variables both sides to solve real-world problems? Uh, you can, let's see, you can compare the costs, the costs of service, um, that charge hourly uh, or weekly rates. And there you go. Whew, boy, we went hot and heavy on that. Twenty, Almost 27 minutes on just 11 questions. Trying to fill in every detail that I could. So I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.